Hello, everybody. Welcome to the seminar on computational geometry and robotics. Uh, I remind you that you can uh, unmute yourself if you wish to ask a question or write it down in the chat and occasionally I'll read it to the speaker. I also remind you that I give lengthy introductions to people outside our field, but today's speaker is an insider and I'm happy to introduce Omrit Filzer who will speak about static and streaming data structure for Frechet distance queries. Omrit, please. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um, so this talk is based on two papers. Uh, one paper is a joint work with uh, Arnold and uh, Mattia Katz. And uh, so last uh, year before COVID, uh, Mattia already gave a talk in this seminar uh, about this paper. So I will go over it uh, more briefly. Um, so this was published in uh, ICAP 20. And the second paper is uh, uh, with a joint work with Arnold, and it will appear in uh, SOTA 21. Okay. So uh, the main object in this talk uh, uh, is curves. So what are curves? Uh, so a polygonal curve uh, P in a, a d-dimensional space is just a sequence of M points uh, and the line, line segments that are connecting uh, every two consecutive points. So here we have two curves, one red and one blue. And you can find curves in many applications, uh, modeling many objects in uh, um, uh, financial charts and uh, uh, spatial uh, trajectories, biology, uh, uh, trajectories of uh, football players and uh, even uh, uh, pandemic uh, graphs. Um, so how do we compare uh, two curves? Uh, how do we decide the distance uh, between uh, two polygonal curves? So of course it depends on the application uh, and there are many uh, distance measures you can uh, choose from. Um, you might uh, know the earth movers distance, the Hausdorff distance, RMS, and uh, Frechet distance, which is um, one of the most uh, famous of them. Uh, and in this talk, I will focus on the Frechet distance and in, it became very popular in the last uh, two decades. Uh, algorithms were implemented in, the, in the traffic analysis, in sports analysis, computational biology, um, and even uh, in the 2017 uh, conference uh, uh, ACM6 spatial, uh, the GIS cup was uh, all about uh, range search and uh, for curves under uh, fresh air distance. Um, so what is this uh, fresh air distance? I think most of you uh, already know, but um, so, so given two polygonal curves, A and B, the continuous uh, fresh air distance, um, it, it is usually described by this uh, nice analogy of a man and a dog. So a man uh, is walking on the blue curve and uh, the dog is walking on the red curve and the man holds the dog with a leash uh, of length uh, delta. And now they are walking along the curves uh, from the starting point to the end point uh, and they are not allowed to go uh, back, they only move forward. And the Frechet distance will be the minimum delta that is uh, sufficient for them to traverse the two curves. So this is the continuous version and uh, here we'll mainly focus on the discrete version um, where we don't care about distances um, between points on the interior of edges, only vertices. So here we define uh, an alignment of two curves. We have two polygonal curves again, and we replace the man and the dog by two frogs. And now the, the frogs are not walking continuously on the curves, but they are hopping along uh, the respective uh, sequences on the vertices. So they're starting in the, with the first point of the respective sequence, and then uh, in each step, uh, either one of them or both of them jump uh, exactly one step forward in the sequence. And this defines uh, an alignment of two curves. 
So an alignment is basically a sequence of pos positions of the frogs, pairs of uh, indexes. Um, and it starts with uh, position one, one ends with uh, mm, which is the length of the sequences, the number of vertices. And um, in, 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 uh, at each step, uh, either one of them or both of them hop uh, exactly one step forward. Okay, so with this alignment, we can define some uh, distance measures. So one of them is the discrete for shared distance uh, in which we minimize over all the alignments, the maximum distance uh, between the forks. So we want the, the, the alignment that minimizes the maximum distance between the frogs um, throughout the traversal of the two curves. This is the discrete Fauché distance. And if we minimize of all the alignments, the sum of distances, we get the dynamic time roping. So here we want the alignment that minimizes the sum of all distances in the positions in the, of the alignment. And um, it's not uh, hard to get uh, uh, the quadratic uh, time algorithm for uh, both the discrete Fauché distance and uh, dynamic time open with a dynamic programming algorithm. So this uh, uh, dynamic programming was already known, known um, in uh, 94. And there is also a quadratic time, near quadratic time algorithm for the continuous version. And there were some uh, uh, logarithmic uh, factor improvements to this running time. But then only 20 years after that, um, there was a, a finally a conditional lower bound uh, by Brinkman uh, showing that under the strong exponential time hypothesis, there is no strongly subquadratic uh, time algorithm, which means that there is no uh, algorithm in time m to the two minus epsilon. Um, so uh, this is a basically type. So uh, it is. Uh, there were also uh, 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 papers after that that showed that it's it's true uh, even in uh, one dimension, and there is not even a three approximation uh, algorithm in subquadratic time. And this is also true for the continuous version. And then what about approximation algorithms? Um, so uh, in this paper, Brinkman and Mazo showed that a greedy approach give uh, an exponential approximation. And they also gave an alpha approximation, which was improved by uh, Chan, Chan and uh, Rahmati. Um, so we have an alpha approximation in time m log m plus uh, m square over alpha square for constant uh, dimension. Um, so for example, we can get an m approximation, uh, a linear approximation in time, uh, in, in linear time, in order m, m log m time. But the question, uh, can we get a constant time approximation, a constant uh, factor approximation in uh, subquadratic time? This is still a very interesting uh, open question. Okay, so when we have a really large curves, uh, sometimes this uh, quadratic time, running time uh, is invisible for some applications. Um, and we need to find some uh, solutions for this. So there are uh, 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 some options. So if we have like really large curves, uh, for example, we can uh, use simplifications. So what are simplifications? Um, here, for example, you can see uh, two curves which have many details. So the blue curve, uh, it's really, it, it has many points, many details. And the simplification is a, a curve which is uh, much shorter, but it maintains the properties of the curve. So in other words, it, it's close to the original curve. So the, the, the uh, red one is shorter, but it's close to the blue, to the blue curve. Um, 
Another option is to use distance or gas. And this is useful in cases where we have one uh, input curve and we want to query, we want distance queries uh, uh, many times uh, to the input curve. Uh, for example, this is useful uh, in signature verification. Um, and if we have large sets of curves, then um, uh, data structures uh, such as nearest neighbor, range searching and clustering uh, are uh, very common uh, solutions. So in this talk, I will talk mainly about uh, nearest neighbor search. I will start with nearest neighbor search uh, for curves, and then I'll move to uh, distance circles. Um, and I hope I will have time to talk about uh, distance circles in the streaming uh, setting. Um, and then I will mention uh, two uh, other uh, nice problems. Okay. So uh, I'll start with the prox approximate uh, nearest neighbor search. Okay, so the nearest curve problem, we have a, a set C, a large set of uh, curves, and delta is some distance measure for curves. And the goal is that given a uh, query Q, we return the curve uh, P star from the data set, which is the closest to Q. Um, so uh, uh, usually we um, consider uh, the approximation uh, problem, which is uh, uh, we can get where well, we can get a more efficient bound. So uh, in the approximateness uh, uh, curve problem, we want to return a curve from the data set with distance uh, uh, at most one plus epsilon time the distance to the nearest curve. And to solve this, we first consider the decision version, which I will uh, tell you about in a second. Um, and there exists an efficient reduction from the approximation version to the decision uh, approximation version. So we can focus uh, now on the decision version. Um, okay, in the decision version, we have in addition to epsilon, a parameter R, and given a data set C with N curves, and each curve has N points for query curve Q, we answer, we basically answer, question, answer queries only when the distance between the query to one of the curves in C is smaller than R. So if there exists a curve P in the data set with distance smaller than R to the query, then we return maybe some other curve from the data set uh, within distance at most one plus epsilon r from uh, the query from q. So when we want to solve uh, this problem, uh, there are basically two extreme approaches. Um, the first one is just not to anything, store only the, sets, the set uh, C, the set of the curves, and the query algorithm do all the work. Uh, it just, when you get a, a query curve, you compute all the distances in a time linear in M. So this is a huge query time and it's not what we want. Uh, the other approach would be to pre-compute everything uh, in the pre-processing time. So store answers to a discretization of all possible yes queries. So yes queries here means queries where there is some curve in the data set within a uh, distance R. So these are queries that I will actually have to return uh, one, uh, one curve from the data set. And then the query algorithm uh, has much less to do just uh, find uh, the right uh, uh, discretization of the query and return the pre-computed answer um, in linear time. But then we should get a huge space for this. Um, so what was done uh, in previous work? 
so th there, there is a sequence of papers uh, considering this problem. The first one is uh, from uh, 2002 by uh, Indic, uh, who used a uh, product matrix. Uh, and he showed a constant approximation, uh, but the space is very large. It depends on uh, this, which is the size of the domain uh, on which the, the curves are defined. So this might be very uh, large. Then uh, only 15 years after that, um, Drimel and Silverstri um, presented a locality sensitive Hessian scheme. Um, but so, so they reduced the space um, for small m, but they get an exponential query time in m. So this is all also uh, uh, not very feasible. And a year later, Amiris and Psaros uh, used the idea to try all the possible alignments. And then for a fixed alignment, you reduce the problem to an infinity product, uh, product of L2 spaces. So, uh, but since there are an uh, exponential number of, uh, of possible alignments, you again get an exponential query time. Um, but but the, here they got a one plus epsilon uh, approximation, which is a great improvement of uh, the previous results. Um, and in our work in the ICAP paper, um, we show that the second the extreme approach of the discretization uh, with some small counting of, of the number of curves that we have to store um, gives much better results. So we still have the one plus epsilon approximation, but now the query time is linear. Um, and also the space bound uh, is much better than all the previous results. Um, and also I should say that uh, there, there is uh, uh, some evidence that uh, this uh, bounds uh, are tight or close to being uh, tight. And uh, I will say a few words about it uh, at, uh, towards the end of the talk. Okay, so what is this uh, discretization and uh, why it works? Um, so what we do is basically we take uh, the set of curves and we lay a uniform grid with uh, edge length, uh, the standard epsilon r over square root d. And then we compute a set of grid curves, so curves with points on the grid that represents all the possible yes queries. So how do we do that? Um, consider just one curve, p. And let's look on the disks with radius uh, uh, approximately one plus epsilon r around the vertices of this uh, curve p. And now we know that uh, any, any uh, query curve that has a distance at most uh, r to p has its points inside uh, this disk. So we only need to choose curves that has points inside those disks. And we do this for all the curves. And then we can just compute, uh, we can uh, store only those that has a distance uh, smaller than r or, or uh, uh, one plus uh, epsilon times r to one of the curves. And um, uh, then when we're given a query q, we can just, snap its vertices to the grid. So the vertices of the query are not necessarily on the grid. We find the grid points closest to its vertices, get um, a grid curve Q hat. And then we just do a simple uh, lookup to see if this Q hat is in our set uh, I of grid curves. And the guarantee in this data structure is that if uh, uh, the red curve Q the query curve is a yes query, then Q hat will be in the, in the data set and we can just return the pre-computed answer. Uh, 
Okay, so why does it work? Um, the correctness just follows simply from the triangle inequality. So the distance between Q to Q hat to the uh, closest uh, grid curve is uh, uh, order of uh, epsilon r, and the distance between uh, Q hat to P, we know that uh, there is one curve P in the data set within distance uh, uh, r from uh, Q hat. So we get that the distance between Q and P is uh, uh, bounded by one plus epsilon r. Um, now we have to count how many curves we store in our uh, uh, data set. So let's do this for one curve uh, P in the data set. So for one uh, disk uh, uh, around the, the vertices of, uh, of P, the number of grid points uh, that uh, are there is order of one over, over epsilon to the D. So now if we, if we do naive counting, um, we have M, M times uh, order of one plus uh, one over epsilon to the D points, uh, and we choose M of them. So uh, this all goes in uh, uh, um, M times one over epsilon to the D to the power of M. Uh, but we don't want this factor here, the M to the M. So we do a more careful counting of, of the number of curves. And for this, uh, we use the, the fact that um, for, for any query Q that has a small distance to P, there is also some alignment that shows this distance. So if we fix one alignment, um, we get that the number of curves that under this alignment has small distance to P is M uh, times one over epsilon to the MD. And since the number of alignments is at most two to the two M, we get the total number of uh, curves that are within uh, distance uh, one plus uh, uh, epsilon R to uh, P is at most uh, this. So the space that we get is N times uh, one over epsilon to the MD because we do it for uh, each curve separately. And the query time, we can just store all these curves in a hash table and get linear uh, query time. Um, but then there is some randomization. And if we want a completely deterministic solution, we can use uh, a prefix tree and get this near linear time uh, uh, query time. Um, so another advantage of, of this approach is that can, it, it can be extended uh, to more settings. So we sh also show that we can uh, use a similar approach for dynamic time looping. Um, here, uh, we don't have triangle inequality and we also need a much more fine uh, grid. Um, so we, we use a different uh, counting argument uh, for, for the yes queries but we still manage to get um, almost similar space and linear uh, query time. And this also extends to approximate uh, range counting. Here it's much more simple. We can just count the number of curves that are within uh, distance uh, uh, one plus epsilon to um, um, the grid curves. And we get the same bounds on the space and the query time. Um, so another important extension is for the asymmetric case. So um, by now I had the query time and the input curves all of the same length and uh, Dream Absolves and Schmidt, they were the first to consider the case where uh, the query time can be small, the query uh, 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 curve can be smaller than uh, the input curve. So the query curve has length K and the input curves has length M. And in this case, the goal is to have no dependency on M. So we want a data structure 
um, with space and query a time that depends only on K. And the idea here is to use uh, K simplifications. Um, okay, so what are simplifications? Uh, more formally, so I told you that a simplification um, is basically a shorter uh, curve which is close to the original. So here this purple curve is a, a pi, is a simplification of P, the blue curve. So there are um, some options to define what is uh, the simplification that we want. Um, we can uh, uh, use optimal K simplification, which means that we're looking for uh, a curve that has length K and also has the minimum distance to P, to the input curve. This will be an optimal K simplification. And another option is optimal delta simplification, where we're lo looking for a curve that has distance delta to P and now we minimize the length of, uh, of such curve. So um, for our purposes, uh, we want a, a no dependency on M. So we will use a, an optimal case simplification. We will compute an optimal case simplification. Um, uh, so this is just a curve with length K and minimum distance to, to P. Okay, so we compute uh, a simplification pi for each curve uh, in our uh, input set. Um, and now we can forget about our uh, input set basically and look at um, uh, disks with larger radius around the vertices of the simplification. So uh, the radius grows only by a constant factor. So we get a similar uh, space and query time. Uh, and what we will compute will be a set of curves that has a small distance to the original uh, curve uh, P, but their points are inside the larger disks around pi. So we will look only for uh, curves uh, of length uh, K. So the space that we get is just replacing uh, the, the M that was here by K and the query time will be linear. Okay, so now I want to move to approximate the uh, distance oracle. Um, and here we are also considering the asymmetric case. So we have uh, an input curve P, uh, which is of length M and some epsilon. And uh, we have a query curve uh, that has length uh, K. And we want to return an approximation of the distance between P and Q. And again, uh, in this asymmetric case, we don't want any dependency on M. So if we want to do an exact algorithm, we don't have uh, much uh, choice. If we want to compute the distance uh, exactly, we can uh, use uh, order of empty space and get this uh, quadratic uh, query time. But if we allow approximation, we can uh, already do uh, something uh, much better uh, and very simple uh, using uh, simplifications. So we store an optimal K simplification pi of the input curve of P. And then uh, for a query Q, we just compute the distance between Q and the simplification. So this takes a quadratic time, but only in K, so there's no dependency on M. And the distance between P and Pi, we can uh, compute in the pre-processing time. So we return this, and um, by the triangular inequality, you can see that this returned uh, value uh, is a tree approximation of the distance between uh, Q and P, just by a simple uh, triangular inequality arguments. So we get order of KD space just to store the simplification and the query time will be um, uh, quadratic, okay? 
but there is no dependency on M. Um, but now if you want a one plus epsilon approximation, it becomes much harder to get. So uh, Drimel, Pseros and uh, Schmidt, they showed uh, a one plus epsilon approximation. Um, they have this uh, case square in the query time. Um, and the space is uh, uh, again exponential. And they have this uh, k to the k factor here. Um, and in our sort of paper, uh, we also showed a one plus epsilon approximation, but now with query time, which is uh, near linear. And we also get a much better space. So we remove this uh, uh, k exponent from the k and from this log. So this is the space that we get. Um, this is the flow chart that shows all the components of our asymmetric distance oracle. And so it starts with a, a decision distance oracle, which uh, means that you get a parameter R um, and you have to answer yes if the distance between a query to the input curve is smaller than R and no if the distance is larger than one plus epsilon R. So this uh, data structure uh, is basically uh, similar to the approximate nearest neighbor data structure that we had before. Just here we have only one curve. So this we already have. Uh, then with uh, this decision distance oracle, we can construct bounded range distance oracle. So here by bounded range, we mean that we get as an input some range alpha beta. And we have to answer uh, distance queries only for the case where the distance between the query to the input curve uh, is in this range. So if the distance is in this range, uh, we return a one plus epsilon approximation of the distance between Q and P. Um, so uh, to do both of uh, these uh, data structures uh, asymmetric, we use uh, an algorithm that computes uh, case simplification. Um, and there is an algorithm that computes case simplification uh, fast, but uh, uh, only for um, uh, constant dimensions. So we generalize it to um, D dimensions. And then uh, using uh, these structures, um, we show how to construct a symmetric uh, distance orcas. But this is a, a little bit weird, right? Because uh, we use a symmetric distance oracle to compute an asymmetric distance oracle, but we use this symmetric distance oracle only for a simplification of length k of the input curve. So we basically, what we do, we're getting um, some input curve p of length m, then we compute a simplification of this curve and for the simplification, the case simplification, we uh, 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 store a symmetric distance oracle. So this symmetric distance oracle has uh, bounds that uh, depend on k because the input curve for it is uh, of length k. So uh, I think that this symmetric distance oracle is uh, the most interesting uh, component here. So I will focus on, on uh, this. Um, and um, uh, to construct it, we need, we, we use the uh, linear approximation in linear time that I uh, told you about earlier. And this one is also, uh, was also shown only for constant dimensions. So we generalize it, uh, generalize it to D dimensions. Okay. So, um, for the symmetric distance oracle, we start by computing a very uh, rough approximation uh, of the distance between P and Q using this uh, uh, linear time uh, linear approximation algorithm. So delta uh, tilde is this uh, very rough approximation of the distance. And then we decide what to do next based on what we got in this estimation. 
And the key insight here is that we decide this based on the length of the edges of P. So let's look at the, the curve P and we um, uh, order the uh, lengths of uh, the distances uh, of, of, the, of the edges of P. So L1 is the length of the smallest edge and M minus one is the largest. And now what we do is we construct um, a bounded range distance circles um, with ranges uh, around all these Li. So I will tell you what are uh, alpha and beta later. And then if our uh, uh, estimation falls into one of these ranges, then we already have a data structure and we can compute in linear time uh, the distance. But if it's not, so there are three cases, it can be very small, it can be very large, or it can fall in between um, uh, ranges. We show that we can compute uh, a one plus epsilon approximation of the distance in linear time. Okay. So we have this uh, estimation uh, uh, delta tilde, and if the this if if this estimation is very small, and by very small I mean um, smaller than half the length of the shortest edge, then let's look at the disks around our curve uh, with radius smaller than uh, L L one over two. So you can see that there are no two consecutive disks that are uh, intersecting, which basically means that uh, if, if Q has uh, this uh, such a small distance to P, then we have a point uh, in each one of these uh, disks and we get a one-to-one -one alignment. So then we can compute the distance in linear time. Um, if this estimation delta tilde is very large, so it's much larger than the length of the longest edge, then basically it means that this curve P has a very small uh, diameter in comparison to the distance between P and Q. So we can uh, bound this P um, in, a, in a, a, a box of size epsilon times uh, uh, the distance between P and Q which basically means that it is enough to compute the distance between Q to one of the points in P, and this is a good enough estimation for the distance between P and Q. Um, if the delta falls in one of the uh, uh, ranges, uh, then we are okay. So the ranges will be uh, epsilon and uh, M squared over epsilon times uh, uh, L. And if we are falling in between uh, these two ranges, so you can see that there is a, a huge difference between um, the two consecutive lengths. So a, a, it means that Li is much smaller than uh, L uh, I, I minus I, I plus one. Um, so what we do here is we basically we remove all the vertices that are adjacent to very small uh, edges along the curve P, and we get a curve P prime that has uh, two important properties. So one property is that it is very close to the original curve P in comparison to uh, the distance between P and Q. So the distance between P and P, P prime is epsilon times the distance between P and Q. And the second property is that the edges of P prime are very large. So they are larger than Li plus one uh, over two. And now if we want to compute the distance between Q and P prime, we are basically back to the first uh, case where we had very large edges and we know that the, the distance is much smaller than um, uh, this length. Uh, so we can compute in linear time and we get um, uh, a one plus epsilon approximation again in linear time. 
So those were uh, the three cases. So uh, again, for any of them, uh, if, if they're not falling, if, if this estimation does not fall in the bounded range, we can compute in linear time. If it's in the bounded range, we can also compute in linear time because we have the pre-computed curves. So we get um, uh, this space, um, because this is just the space of all the bounded range distance circles, and the query time is linear. Okay, um, so now I want to move to the streaming case. Uh, I will talk about it maybe, okay, maybe I can make it. So, um, in the streaming case, we want a distance circle. Uh, well, the input is given as a stream. So we get the points of P uh, one by one. And um, uh, at each point in time, we want to have a distance circle for the uh, curve P that we saw so far. Um, and we want that the space of this distance circle will be independent of, uh, of M, of the length of P. So for this problem, and uh, Alps, Alps, and Schmidt showed um, a construction of uh, a distance circle uh, with uh, this uh, space, and the query time is uh, roughly k to the four. Um, in our sort of paper, we showed that uh, we can actually uh, use a very similar structure of uh, our uh, static distance circle and, and make it to work in the streaming scenario and we get the, the exact same, same bound. So the query time will again be near linear uh, and we get the same space. Um, so what do we need to change in uh, this uh, flow chart? Um, so uh, as I told you, what we do is computing a simplification. And for this simplification, uh, we compute a symmetric uh, distance circle. Um, so the two basic components that we need to uh, work in the streaming scenario are the decision distance circle. So anytime, every time we get a point, um, we need to update the decision uh, distance circles that uh, we store. And also we need to update the simplification uh, of, of the input curve that we store. So for both of this, we have uh, a, a streaming algorithm. Okay, so I will tell you about the decision distance circle very uh, uh, briefly in the streaming scenario and the idea for uh, the simplification. Um, would be similar in the high level. So I will uh, skip it. So for the decision distance circle, what we need to remember is that um, uh, the, this, the, the data structure is basically a set of curves, a set of grid curves. So we have this uh, set of grid curves that we have computed for some curve P and we, we are not only computing uh, curves of length k, we will also compute all the curves of length smaller than k, all the grid curves of length at most k. Now, when we get a new point uh, of our uh, stream, um, we show that we can uh, update our set of, uh, of grid curves uh, by looking only at the previous set. So uh, imagine that we don't know what this uh, black curve, uh, uh, this blue curve uh, looks like, but we got another point and we have the set of, uh, of uh, purple uh, grid curves. Um, and now uh, some of them will uh, be removed. Some of them we will uh, extend, so we will add uh, another point and some of them will uh, maybe remain. Uh, in our data structure, but we can uh, update um, uh, the set by looking only at the set of uh, purple curves. Um, and now, but 
um, what I did is I, I picked some R and then I showed you how to extend it, but how do we know what R we should pick? So what we do is we choose some uh, initial value of uh, R and uh, then at some point, it might be that there will, no, there will be no curves of length K that has distance R uh, to the input curve, which means that our R, the, the R that we have chosen is too small. So what we do is we choose some curve from the previous set, we call it W, from the set that wasn't empty from the last uh, stage of, uh, of the algorithm. And then we increase um, our uh, R, the estimation of the distance, by uh, uh, multiplying it in some parameter in, which is uh, roughly one over epsilon. Um, and then we start over as if uh, this W was P. So we look at this W uh, at, as if it was P and since we increase um, our R, uh, we will get uh, that the next uh, set will not be empty. And if it will be empty, we will increase uh, R again. So we get that the distance between this W to the original P is very small in comparison to uh, our new R. And that's why we get this uh, one plus epsilon approximation. Okay, I will skip the simplification algorithm. And I want to uh, show you a, a new problem, which we called uh, the zoom in problem. Uh, and I will also tell you about distance hotel to a subcurve. So in this uh, new problem, the zoom, zoom in problem, uh, imagine that you have, uh, 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 you're looking at uh, Google Maps, when you compute some uh, um, uh, path on the map, um, but your screen can uh, uh, show only K points uh, along this uh, uh, trajectory, uh, even though it has much more points, like M points. And now you want to zoom in uh, at some part of this trajectory. So you zoom in, in but you still want to see K points. You don't want to see less than this uh, number. Um, so in this problem, we get as an input curve uh, P uh, of length M and some K. Uh, and the goal is given uh, um, uh, a range I and J uh, along this uh, curve P. We want to return a K simplification of uh, the subcurve between I and J. So when we zoom in, we want a case simplification of what we have uh, zoomed on. And uh, this has applications also uh, in DNA visualization. I searched for, uh, I looked at this uh, website, there's a link here, um, uh, where you can uh, zoom in into uh, a subsequence of this graph. And also here in financial charts, if you want to, um, uh, look only at uh, a few years or a few months, then you can zoom in and see much more uh, details. Um, so we show that uh, we can get a query time which is uh, linear, but it's a bicriteria. So we, we return a simplification of length 2k instead of k. Uh, and uh, uh, the space will be uh, m times k times log. And this relates to the problem of distance oracle to a subcurve, uh, which was uh, previously investigated. Uh, so here the input is a curve p, and again, uh, the query in the query we get a range, but we also get a query curve, and we want to approximate the distance between q to the subcurve. So here we can uh, um, do just the trivial solution of storing the distance oracles for any uh, i and j. 
and we will get uh, a linear query time, uh, but the space will be quadratic in M. Um, so previous solutions only consider the case of uh, K equals uh, two. Uh, so this paper um, is for the continuous distance and uh, this one has a little improvement in the query time uh, for the discrete case. Um, and we show a solution for any K uh, that has a, a query time K square. Um, and, and we don't have this dependency on M and the uh, space near linear in M. Uh, and of course we have this K in the exponent of the one plus epsilon. Okay, so some open questions. Um, first one is about lower bounds. So I told you that I will mention uh, the, the lower bound that uh, um, uh, so Drimel and uh, uh, Pseros have a paper uh, on archive showing uh, a lower bound in the cell probe model um, for, for a distance oracle, for a decision distance oracle. So uh, this lower bound, I, I think it almost matches uh, our bounds. So uh, that's an evidence also that our uh, nearest neighbor that structure uh, is close to type. Uh, another important question is, uh, can we get a constant approximation with polynomial space? So all our data structures has exponential space, um, but can we, uh, um, if we don't care about a very small approximation, we don't want a one plus epsilon approximation, but a constant approximation, can we do polynomial space? And the last question is to consider uh, realistic families of curves. So we consider uh, general curves, but uh, it might be the case that for realistic uh, curves, for example, a CPAC or a case rate, or uh, there are many types of uh, realistic curves, uh, we can get much better uh, results uh, for nearest neighbor search, for example. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Omrit. Uh, let's do the Zoom hand clapping. Uh, <laughs> anybody has questions? Don't hesitate. You can unmute yourself and, uh, and ask or write in the chat. And while you are thinking, I'll ask Omrit a question. When you said Zoom in, I thought you would get a small rectangular window and give me an approximation of all the curves that fall in this window. And I wonder if your approach can be extended to this case. You have a limit of K, the number of points that you can show in this window, but now mm -hmm. I want really to zoom in on, on my map. So again, you want to zoom in on some, uh, so, so you It's you're not giving... a single curve. There, there is a collection oh. of curves that are very detailed, I'm zooming in with the rectangle, but I have only an allowance of K for all the portions of the curves that fall in this window. Mm -hmm. It might be that you can take your approach and extend it there. Here I only compute a simplification of one curve, yes. Yeah, I guess, I mean, you can use ideas from, from uh, our construction, but I guess you will need much more. If you want a rectangle and everything for in this uh, window, so we, so you are talking about like you're giving me um, uh, coordinates of a rectangle, or you're giving me what do you mean by rectangle? Yes, I'm yeah. assuming that your curves describe some complicated map, mm -hmm. and I give you the coordinates of a small rectangle, and mm -hmm. I just ask you zoom in into this picture of all your right. Curves. So I, I didn't think much about it. And just yeah, so I think that. it's different because um, here we're looking at on indices of the curve. And if you would give me a, a coordinates of points instead of indices, it will be different because even for one curve, you can get a different uh, pieces of the curve, That's right? True. If you zoom That's in, true. That's true. then... Uh, 
you somehow have to translate it into the indices of the of the curve. But right. just a thought. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's also it's very interesting and uh, also uh, looks like the, there are applications for for this question. Yeah, but I don't know if you can do similar ideas. Maybe, maybe yes, I have to check. Okay. But thanks, thank you for the question. <laughs> so let me thank Omrit again and just advertise uh, the talk for next week. Let me find it here. So next week, Shando Fekete will be the speaker and he will talk about geometric algorithms for large robot swarms. See you all next week. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.